luck is gone from my way Wherever I go, hard luck is dead in state Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always a coming my way Today we find ourselves in Manesson, Pennsylvania for a bit of a special Grim Life episode, especially if you're a fan of horror. This is my very first time visiting the Tom Savini Special Makeup Effects Program, and we have a special guest, the man of horror himself. Hey, I bid you welcome. Come on in. Walk this way. Go ahead, I'll be right behind you. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. This is what potential students see when they walk in the building. Uh, it's all, uh, uh, it's my stuff. Little inspirational board here. And then this is all student work here. Kevin, I, I could have just came and shot this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> individual mm -hmm. for the book. I'm doing a, I have a book coming out, like a coffee table picture book of uh, everything. And these are like, in 20 years now, these are oh, wow. the students. The last picture was 2018. This is our lead instructor, Jerry Gurgley. You'll meet him shortly. When the door was open, I saw a nice picture of a uh, wolfman back uh -huh. there. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh, this bust that he's doing up here. He's doing a bust of me. I haven't seen it yet. I've seen it. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the creature from the back of him. Now, what's misleading about this picture? Why don't you focus on it? See these guys? This is uh, Bud Westmore and Jack Kevin taking the credit for this. All the work, yeah. And this this was done by a woman named Millicent Patrick. That's right. A book just came out about her association with uh, the creature, and the head was ridiculous before. She did this beautiful work of art, and she doesn't get the credit for it until recently. So now we're about to enter the Hall of Universal Monsters. And, oh, oh my gosh. It's hard to believe that this is a school. Well, we try to uh, inspire them with stuff. Like these are some of the greatest makeups that have ever been done. Boris Karloff as the mummy in Hotel. Here's uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, wow. You can see he has three plates. That would be the Ben Chapman creature. Not that this is a great makeup, but it was a great movie, classic, of course, by Lugosi. And, uh, oh, these are all my sculptures, by the way. I just saw the sign there. It says sculptures by Tom Savini. Yeah, yeah. Not the creature, of course. <clears throat> the Phantom. He was one of the recent ones. But they finally locked him down. He should be facing this way now, don't you think? Yeah, yeah just like uh, just like him, you know, the see, he's, he's not. Yeah. The way you move it, it's almost like it's like a secret passageway open. Yeah, and the door should open, huh? Right? <laughs> That's Bella Lugosi up here, his life mask. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. Hi. What's going on in here? Yeah. Say what? Corrective makeup. Oh my god, you're going to be here for a year. <laughs> Where's Deja? She washed her hands. hands. Oh, well, good. We'll catch her when she comes in. Here she Hi. is right here. Hello. This is Deja, one of our uh, Hello. super teachers. Yeah, we're covering corrective today, which, you know, the basic of pretty much every beauty makeup you ever do. There's a so. lot of that going on. If mm -hmm. you look at, look at uh, television, even like Conan O'Brien. You can see the shading on the side of his mm -hmm. cheeks. But because it's H, if you watch it in HD, you can see the color spray in his hair uh -huh. on, his, <laughs> on his bald spot. I didn't use mine today. But uh, you can see it on his hair. And you know, look at, uh, look at women in soap operas, the contours and the shading. Mm -hmm. Even as far back as Star Trek, yeah. William Shatner, you can see the shading to make his face more oval, which is the ideal 
head shape on your pad right there. That oval shape is what they're after. Taking everybody's face and making a little oval mm -hmm. and your, your nose prominent and stuff like that. You know, so. Well, have fun with it, no matter what. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. Oh, it's my pleasure. Appreciate it. <laughs> this, is for a, this is for a YouTube channel called... Uh, Grim right Life Collective. Grim Life, yeah. Ta -da. Awesome. They have like a hundred thousand followers sometimes. Some, like, something crazy like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something, something big and popular, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and this is <laughs> this is. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, this is unique, and it's only happened recently. Uh, how many guys are in here? There's two, but one's not here today. And look at all these women. The classes lately have been. We had a class come in October of sixty students, mostly female. And this is the student lounge, and it looks like this. This is phenomenal. Oh, wow. Let's check that out. I love how everything here, every building or every room has a theme to it. It looks like you're walking through a giant dungeon. Oh my God. Okay. This is just one of the examples of, uh, we try to, in the classrooms of you, as you've noticed, uh, do sets for the students in the film program. You're gonna see more of that downstairs. It's more like the uh, Death Star. Oh, okay. It's like a Death Star type. I thought that one, okay. Yeah, it's Imperial Emperor. If I had like any ounce of creativity <laughs> with like my hands, like creating stuff, I would I would be here in a heartbeat. Or right. try to. This is amazing. I hope you recorded that because that's what we want potential students to hear. Hell, it's recording. Okay. So, Tom, do you want to yeah, sure. introduce this? Hey. Jerry Gurgley, we were just talking about. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, Mr. Oh, Gurgley? my crappy office? Yeah, with all the. We showed him your name tag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Told him we were going to meet you. So, what semester is this? This is third semester. Okay. They are doing a multi piece prosthetic appliance, but oh, she right. is in also in the mask class and she's getting started on her. Excellent. Uh, what they're doing is they're cleaning her hydrocal casts off so that they can coat them with KY jelly and it puts a barrier over the plaster so they can sculpt on top of it. Now, the and plaster then, is the life mask that they made of each other, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, and then they trade them, and they, it's hydrocal, which is very porous, and if you put KY jelly on it, it puts a barrier between the plaster and the clay, so that you can cut the clay up, and when you soak it in water, the KY jelly dissolves, and the clay floats off, and you can put it onto a smaller positive, so like a forehead, nose and lip, neck, yeah. break it up into pieces, it's a multi-piece prosthetic. I did, I did. I've never seen anybody strapped into it, but it certainly It's almost like a perfect fit for you. It is, look at that. It wasn't based on me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Put some uh, look, see, look, shocking effects all, in there. It's like set, set pieces for the film students. And it's also classrooms. This is crazy. For a second, I was wondering if that was an active, like an, an actual yeah. camera, but it's, it's, it's right there. This is the animatronics classroom where they learn how to give life to their creatures. Oh, wow. How do they make them to make them come to life? Which is the fun. I call it the Frankenstein syndrome. You're an artist. All of a sudden, you've created something that never existed before. And if you're lucky like me, you get to kill it. Because I created Jason for Friday the 13th. Killed him in part four. Of course, there's like 13 more after that. But this is where they bring their creations to life. And this is, this is what we call the Frankenstein syndrome. We gave life to something that didn't exist before. Uh, down at Universal Studios, they have the horror monster makeup show. Yeah. And they, they show a little bit about 
how they do the animatronics with uh, American Werewolf in London. I helped create that thing. Really? Before uni when Universal was a desktop, a tabletop model as big as this table, and we were designing the horror makeup show. Back then, it was uh, two pods where you, like, somebody would walk in and come out as the fly across the stage. Back then, it was King Kong was involved. But I'm still in the videos. They still attribute the slicing. They talk of, about you, yeah. Me, right, right. Sometimes I'm sitting there and they're like, you know, and I, you know, talk to them afterwards. But yeah, I helped. Uh, I consulted on the creation of the horror makeup show. So this, this is the oven. Yeah. I use this oven on creep show. I can't say how many movies I have used this oven on to bake foam for the appliances and stuff. Yeah. Then I sold it to the school. I gave it to the school 20 years ago, and it's still going strong. This is a, I mean, these guys, and this is the oven we used after I gave the school this oven. This became my oven, which I gave to the school. And that's still working. Unbelievable. We had to find out the name of that company. And Hello, everyone. Hello. All right. This is a YouTube channel called The, the Grim Life Collective. So this is a variation of it on there. Cool. What do you guys? Leave me alone. Oh, we're being attacked. You're being attacked by the broom. What are we working on? Oh, teeth. We're making yeah. teeth. And this is the tooth, teeth and eye room. Eyes room. based off of, so just going through here in my uh, spare time and just kind of carving away at it. Very nice. So you'll tell the students what their project is for the day and you can relax and... Yep, after I, give, after I give my demo and then I can answer questions as they come up through here. I also yep. create at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing about this school. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, yeah. to come up on that screen over there but this is just a partial list of movies that the students have worked on oh wow that's a partial list but that's a that's a big list because they're all like big name movies oh yeah yeah TV we're talking shows. about guardians of the galaxy avengers and then tv the walking dead westworld the nick This is our theater, which you'll see shortly. Bob Turnell is head of the film program. This is Dick Smith, the greatest, the late Dick Smith, but he was the greatest living makeup artist on the planet. He invented everything we do, and we simply enhance and improve it and give it back to him. Doug Bradley, Pinhead from the Hellraiser movies, comes out here and does stuff for the film program every now and then. Two famous makeup artists, Steve Johnson and Bill Corso, that have come here and done portfolio review. Um, George Romero. Nora Hewitt again, who won Face Off. This is um, it's a shot of Greg Nicotero here somewhere. Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead in KMB. This is, oh, here's Greg right here. Greg used to come here and do uh, some seminars. This is my pet gorilla. George Romero. Jeff and Brescia, the president. This is the cutting of the ribbon for the film program, right here. This was a student who never sculpted before, Darren Holt. I bought this from him as soon as he made it. Jessica's lives in her mind. It's like one of her favorite movies. She's oh, you're kidding. Well, you'll see it at my studio, because oh. I bought it. He did two of them, the daytime one and the nighttime one. That's blue with glowing yeah. eye. I have both of them. I bought them from Darren Holt. This is in his second semester at the school. Never sculpted before. Darren works for big for Steve Wang right now. Dick Smith again. This was the teacher, Will Ritter, 
who made this vampire. But this is student work. The rest of this is all student work. glasses and stuff in the pockets. See the bullwhip on the bed? Oh yeah. The fedora. <laughs> I mean, look at this beautiful bed. I think next time I come here as a VIP, I'll stay in this room. And there's a snake on the bed too. Oh yeah. Oh. Here's there's the, Indiana Jones himself. Yeah. Here's the Star Wars room over here. Kevin, you should stay in the Star Wars room sometime. Uh, oh wow. My wife would love this bed. She's she loves silver stuff, silver shoes, silver jackets. Oh, this is so cool. This is very very cool. Mm -hmm. All right. This is the Jaws room. That is great. Oh, just look at the wall. Yeah, that's beautiful. You gotta see the grease room over here. You'll love, you'll love this room here. This is the grease room, you said? This is the grease room, yeah. <laughs> Everything from a pink lady's jacket. Uh -huh. oh. oh, nice noise. Did you see the uh, Disney Star Wars mm -hmm. theme park build your own lightsaber thing? No. For 200 bucks. And, and oh, yes, you yes. Pick the style of saber you want, and then you go into this room and they like have you build one. This is the Frankenstein room. Oh, I'm excited to see this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is kind of how I want our bedroom and our house to be. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Why is, why is there a Phantom of the Opera poster in the Frankenstein room? That's a sculpture. That's a sculpture that I did. You did this one? Yeah. yeah. And that's how you display a poster right there. That's right. <laughs> and this is the Godfather room. The Godfather room is across the hall. From the Frankenstein room. From the Frankenstein room. And there's a horse head in the bed. Oh, well, he's facing the wrong way. He needs to be like this. His wig needs to be on. <laughs> <laughs> and there's usually red ribbons coming out of here like blood, you know? Nice. See, that that's how a hotel should, uh, you know, it, 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 what do you call it, welcome their guests. You see little bullets on the wall? Oh yeah, yeah. Over here. This came to me as a promo for something, but I, I gave it to the school. It's, you know, Luca Brazzi sleeps with the fishes. Nice. 
And now we're entering the Romero filming program. This is beautiful. I'm sure Bob will agree with me that there was a time when if you were shooting a movie, a commercial, a TV show or whatever, you were limited, your budget was limited to what you could show, what you could afford to build or show. With this green screen and the digital filmmaking program, if you can think of it, if you can imagine it, it's easily done because of this green screen. Yeah, I mean, we like to say that you can, you can walk in the door of this place with an idea and you can walk out with footage, know, uh, with footage that's <laughs> yeah. actually, you know, saleable, it's actually usable. Um, and unlike when we got started, you know, you had to, everything was film and you would shoot. I had a class kind of like this when I was in school and you, you didn't know for like three days if what you if shot what you came out good. or not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're pretty lucky. I mean, they'll be capturing and going to work today. And the, the other cool thing about this class is they're on a five hour deadline. Like they have to get it done in a limited amount of time because right. we want them to be aware of specifications and deadlines because, I mean, I tell people I'm more interested in film graduates that know how to balance petty cash and keep their receipts and you know actually show up on time as much as that they could talk theory about you know Eisenstein or Fellini or something like that so whenever we make our films like this that we are a part of we just as long as it looks good and it sounds good let's just roll with it you know so <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a different kind of thing but this is this is amazing yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool it's a, it's a pretty <laughs> <laughs> but that means dinosaurs would be showing up so what I meant by when I said you could do almost anything is I can be anywhere. I can be here or here or even here. If I wanted to be in a horror movie, you'd see something like this behind me. <laughs> if I wanted to be in a romantic comedy, maybe this. Anyway. So in this room, they'll do sound effects and foley. Oh, nice. Right? This is how you get different sound effects and I like that you're using a leg bone for that. <laughs> Just so you know. They, right? they... And then voiceover work happens here. When I did The Simpsons, I was in a room just like this doing my my script for the episode. And they were making me drink Dr. Pepper so I could burp on cue. <laughs> <laughs> I have the tubes that come out of here sitting on a bookshelf at home. Bring them because we're going to have somebody fix this up. Yeah, this needs yeah. nylon stockings. When I told you we're going to get a student to do the museum, right, this right, is right. the first piece that we're going to fix. But if you're in charge of it, have them talk to me. Okay. Nylon stockings that are glued to seal this okay. and it paints over just like the rubber does. And this is something else that needs sprayed with silicone lubricant. That's why this is happening. This is what happens to rubber if you don't coat it with armor all or silicone lubricant, at least once a year. Mm -hmm. So, d did you create this just for the fun of it, or no, I, it was for a was, uh, When you come to my house, you'll see my action figures are life size. Okay. Predator, creature from the Black Lagoon, Frankenstein. Oh, you know, they're all life size. Um, I'll do a I'll do a video or something for the company that makes them, like a commercial or something, and they'll say, uh, "What is your fee, Darth Vader?" <laughs> Predator, you know, I'll take the alien, you know, and you'll see them. That's how I get them. That's a great way they're to work. payment. They're a payment to me for, you know, being in the company's video. Never in a million years did I think that I would actually be able to tour Tom Savini's school with Tom Savini himself. It was pretty amazing. And afterwards, he invited us back to his house to take a look at his private horror memorabilia collection and to do a grim interview. Everything color my hat. Hi, little baby. Hello. I don't Hello again. To you, but Put oh. your face now. Hi. Put your face now. My face? Yeah. Look, just look. Oh. You got scared away. Hi, baby. Do it now. There you go. Aww. Oh. That's Max. Sweet. There's Max and Bruce somewhere. We just rescued an itty bitty five kitten. Well, these were, we got you these. Are beautiful. That, they were abandoned the day they were born. They were like little embryos. I took two of them. <laughs> Your house is amazing, sir. Oh, this is only the living room. These are the thrones from Night Riders. Oh. Very cool. 
Yeah, you know, we walked up and I saw your motorcycle out there, and immediately I was like, Night Riders. And that's Vincent Price Young and Vincent Price Old. Basil Rathbone, Boris Karloff, Clark Gable, Peter Laurie, Christopher Lee, and Bela Lugosi. And this up here, this is my dad. This is my dad's passport picture. Oh, oh wow. God. Think of Robert De Niro from The Godfather yeah. 2. That's exactly what Robert De Niro looked like in yeah, the Godfather. Yeah, it looks exactly like him. That's his dad. Who's your dad's name? Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Thank you. Here's Bruce. Well, hello, Bruce. Hello, Bruce. Hi. Oh, my gosh. You guys are amazing. You're very friendly. I know where to begin. I don't know where to begin. Are you recording? Um, mm-hmm. Do you have a name for this room? No. No. Um, studio? Because I make stuff here. You know. One of the rooms of your many horror yeah, yeah. memorabilia <laughs> studio. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. There's masks everywhere you look. So my question, because there's so many, with a collection like yours, can you pick five things in this room that you cannot believe you have? Well, um, that I cannot believe I have. Well, everything is so... Well, right behind her is the Predator. The Predator, now that's, that's an example of, you know, I did a video for the people that make them, and they said, what do you want? Give me the Predator. Same thing with the Alien. The Alien was first. This is from Distortions Unlimited. And they said, uh, can I host a video of their studio? What do you want? Oh, give me that alien. And they, they shipped it, of course. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, this is uh, Darren Holt, that student I told you about. He did this in his second semester. Never sculpted before. He said he, he did two of them, right? One yeah, for day, one for night. Yeah, that's upstairs. You'll see that one. Um, what else? Uh, well, her. This I got. This was in the horror makeup show at Universal. Oh. This was part of. The, this was on top of the refrigerator in the room. And uh, I traded them uh, a bust of my Phantom of the Opera for that. So, you know, a lot of stuff I get by trading, you know. I love that the vampire from Salem's Lot is just like, Hi guys, talk about me, talk well, about that, me. Well, that's Darren Holt as well. Really? Darren Holt, one of my students did this. He's gone on to make so many. I'll show you some other things that he's made up in the theater. Um, you have a theater here too? Oh, yeah. Of course you do. Yeah, of course. These are all from different conventions I've gone to. Actually, they're all from the Monster Bash. The aliens are new. Uh, the girl with her top of her head missing, that's also blood-sucking pharaohs in Pittsburgh. Right there. And you did point out something right there from Creepshow. Yeah, that's Yarbrough. He was uh, Vivica Linford's husband, boyfriend, who was shot by her... Uh, who shot him? You have to watch, I forget. I don't have a chronological memory, I don't know when. I know I did stuff, I just don't remember when I did stuff. You know. Sometimes who <laughs> was involved. I could just stand here for hours and just look and just be like, look at that, look at that, look yeah. at that. Because it's amazing. I saw pictures of this corner right here. Yeah, I did and a lot of stuff right here. I never thought that what would be behind the camera, you know, when the lens is pointing that way. Mm. So that's... A treat. Well, I wanted uh, I wanted a copy of Benicio del Toro's Werewolf. And I found a copy of it in England. Um, I can punch that up pretty quickly here under Werewolves. There's so many photos in my uh, phone that I have to categorize. Okay. You sound like Jessica. She's yeah, got. Here's a. This is the Benicio del Toro oh in England. But the guy wanted $4,500 for it, so I made my own. Yeah. See? And you can do things like that, then you can make anything you want. That's a Jordu shell right there, a green goblin. And of course, of course, fluffy. fluffy. And there's more behind me. There's some mass-produced fluffy masks. Pumpkin head hanging right by them. And this is, uh, this is Nubbins from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the mass-produced Nubbins. I sold the original Nubbins to a guy, Jason Guy's his name. He, he made a famous post on Instagram of taking Nubbins through the x-ray machine at the airport. 
you know, it's a real skeleton. And they're like, I mean, it was a big deal on uh, either YouTube or... Yeah, you, you also have corpses, bodies on the roof. That one oh, yeah. looks real, but it's probably not, is it? No, I don't think it is. It might be plastic. At least the skull looks at that. That's crazy. Yeah. It does, yeah. Look at him over here. That's just beautiful. That's a body that Steve Johnson made for, uh, I don't know what, but he gave it to me to use in Day of the Dead. It's in the background somewhere. This guy here, he turns into a werewolf. Look at him dead on. Oh yeah. See how he turns into a werewolf? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. And there's the haunted mansion. We're both, Jessica and I are huge haunted mansion fans. Wait, this is your bedroom? Yeah. Holy crap. Jessica, you see that? I did, yes. This one seems a lot bigger than the red version. Um, I don't know. It's the same thing, but just painted differently. With um, LEDs in the eyes. That's a Drew Du shell up there as well. That's me over there from the Dust Till Dawn TV series. It's on Netflix. Yeah. I'm in six episodes of the third season. If you watch it, just watch episode nine. Okay. That's the big swashbuckling bull yeah, whip. Yeah, the first season. I really like it. I haven't made it to the other seasons yet. Oh, there's okay. one. There's one. Oh, right. she's obsessed with that movie. I'm in love with Pete, man. Come on. <laughs> This was going to be storage, but it turned out so big I made the people out of it. Well, this is Darren Holt. Right here. This is Jerry Only's jacket from the Misfits he gave me for my birthday. Greg Nicotero gave me this. Oh, this is that laser print I told you about. Oh, yeah. First That's time laser printed? Well, it was done on ZBrush first, and then sent it to the, from the computer to the laser printer, and then this, this came out. Does it come out painted, or is that just a color no, of no, material? The, I asked him to paint okay. it like a bronze. Yeah. This fine. Right? I'm just like wildly pointing because I have no words. No, it's just... Michael Jackson. I would never leave this house if I lived here. <laughs> Well, like I said, I didn't want to give up any wall space, so the screen comes down like that. That's amazing. That's the rabbit from Twilight Zone. That Frankenstein is an old sculpture, but a new paint job. It's beautiful. And that head of mine, that's George Duchel. That's me in the 80s. He's got some am am amazing talent. Oh, wow. Incredible. I told you he's the best mask maker in the world that I know of. Wow. But he, uh, that was a commission piece, one of my friends commissioned Jordan to do that. And this is a billboard here that I've owned for 30 years. I finally was able to, uh, that's one of the reasons I built this room, to put this billboard up. It, it doesn't fit though, you see how it extends yeah. on right. the sides, you know. It's just, there, did you see the movie screen? Yeah. Yeah. So I noticed your collection of capes. Oh yeah. It's so because, you know, I directed Dracula a few times. Here's the... And it was also a Broadway show, right? Yeah, yeah. But this is the poster from my version. You see how it's made up of different animals? Yeah. 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 This is at the City Theater we did this. It was the most successful play, financially, of the 18-year history of the theater at that time. It was really a magic show. You see how it says directed special effects? Mm -hmm. I turned Dracula into a bat right on stage. I can explain that to you when <laughs> it's a long story. Right. You got one for The Burning, too. Uh -huh. That's an amazing movie. Yeah, yeah. How many people I know have seen that? 
<clears throat> oh. This is my fan of the opera. Very nice. This is the knife that Quincy carried in Bram Stoker's Dracula, the Texan. Yes. Here's my Academy Award. I never thought in a million years I'd be able to see one in person, and I never even thought that possibly you would... Well, I, 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 I had this made in Hong Kong. Okay. <laughs> from the people that make them for the Academy Award. Yeah. I gave myself an Academy Award. Very nice, very nice. And then, what's, is it another award, or is it just the statue? That's the Fory it's... Ackerman Award, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And all, the other awards are here. These are all the Saturn Award. We went down to Tampa, Florida. And where Rondo Hatton is buried. Oh. And uh, we did a, a YouTube video called The Grave of Rondo Hatton. And we go to a cemetery, pay our respects, and talk about the, that award. And just rather neat to find yeah, out he's... They had a table full of those awards at the Monster Bash. Yeah. Was just a, uh, this is um, Triple H, the wrestler. I designed his crown and headpiece for WrestleMania five years ago. But we, he's, he's worn it ever since, like five years in a row. Michael Jackson's cat wolf thing. Frederick March, Jekyll and Hyde. That's American Werewolf in London. Oh, man. American see. Werewolf. Wait a minute. Rick Baker's was called the American Werewolf in London. But there was another one, American. No, Werewolf of London. Yeah. Not American, yeah. So the skull in the box. Just a skull that I bought. Just a skull? Yeah. It's just a good way of showing it. I like, I like skulls. <laughs> yeah. Well, you saw the steps leading up to the bedroom. There's yes. a skull on every step. Yeah. Here's, this is the real Fluffy. Oh, my. That was the screen used? Well, no, no. Um, I gave Fluffy to Greg Nicotero, who had it refurbished. Okay. This is the refurbished Fluffy. But from the same molds, you know, same yeah. materials. Beetlejuice, of course. Oh, yeah. It's Alice Cooper's head from his uh, concert. I notice you have another Alice that's Cooper that's over the there. One. Yeah. That's the big one from his, uh, his concert. This is one of my paintings here. That's, that's beautiful as well. Yeah, thank you. Bought it at a convention. Apparently, it's a face hugger from something that I haven't seen. You know, But I was flipped over the fact that it had webbed. Yeah fingers and stuff, you know. I always wanted to start collecting masks, mm -hmm. but after seeing this, I, I got to now. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm 72, so I've been collecting yeah. a lot longer than... Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking your cabinet full of heads. Yes. <laughs> it's just... What was it like on the bottom? Uh, just an ex-girlfriend. Uh, she was on the crew, so we used her head and that's a severed head from her. <clears throat> oh man. You gotta shoot Max. Well, hello Max. <laughs> you following us around? I see ya. So you said you are a big fan of the movie Gremlins. Yeah. Well because Rick Baker did them. Really. Yeah. Oh you gotta see this. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do it. It makes sense that you would have something like that here. Of course. When you're in Vietnam, I was there for a year. Most, most guys are. I enlisted to stay out of Vietnam because if you're drafted, you know, you go right to infantry, but if you enlist, you get your choice of schools. I chose photography thinking, well, what do they need photographers for? But they sent me right over to Vietnam. So you're there for a year. Now, after six months, you're allowed to go on R&R, &R, rest and recuperation. You know, guys went to Australia, Japan, you know, I went to Hawaii, met, my, met up with my ex-wife, but I waited till my 10th month I didn't want to come back to Vietnam and have six months left. So I came back and had two months left, but they put me on the worst duty possible. It's 30 days of guard duty. So 
<clears throat> you're in a bunker with three other guys. The bunker is sandbags, you know, and there's seven bunkers. Okay, 50 yards apart, seven bunkers, and the officer in charge is in the first bunker, okay? Now, every bunker is an arsenal. We had grenade launchers, claymore mines, M16 machine guns, and it's you in the, in the jungle. If they're coming, your first contact, okay? In front of each bunker is a, a wire, a trip flare, in the front and one on each side. And if you bump it, a flare goes off. If you cut it, it's spring-loaded and a flare goes off, okay? Now, if you saw a thousand Viet Cong running at you, you were not allowed to open fire. You had to call the command bunker. The officer would come up with a night scope. If he sees them, he has to call battalion to get permission to fire, okay? Okay. Not allowed to open fire. Okay, so it's 3 o'clock in the morning on my seventh day of guard duty. We had just smoked the biggest joints you can imagine because the Schnook helicopters went by and there could be nothing out there anymore, okay? So it's 3 o'clock in the morning. We had just smoked and my trip flare goes off right in front of my bunker and I immediately opened fire with the M16 machine gun. And then Morales took unslung his M16. He's firing. The guys above woke up and they're setting off mines and grenade launchers, you know. Every bunker, seven bunkers, opened fire in front of my bunker. Forget the 4th of July. This was unbelievable. Tracer rounds, you know. Right. Trees were getting knocked over. And it was a duck. So, <laughs> you could now see a caravan of Jeep's headlights coming to me for violating the no fire you know, rule law. And a general gets out of the Jeep. You could see the stars. And he called me down because I couldn't speak. And he said, uh, why did you open fire? I said, well, my trip flare went off, sir. Oh, well, I guess I would have opened fire too. What was it? It was a duck, sir. A duck. Did you get it? No. <laughs> we covered every square inch of dirt with something, a bullet, shrapnel. The duck, you know, flew away. He said, all right, next time challenge it. In other words, halt who's there. Wah, wah. You know, anyway, they took me off of guard duty that night after seven days. And for the rest of my time in Vietnam, they called me the duck slayer. All right, no. The next night, we were attacked by the Viet Cong. Guys in those bunkers died. Buddies, Morales was killed. I wasn't there. The duck saved my life. Right. I never eat duck. I never eat duck. I respect ducks. As far as I'm concerned, that duck saved my life. I mean, what coincidence, of course. Right. But, you know, I'm, in my new book that's coming out, which is a coffee table picture book, it's a biography, I explained the five times that I was nearly killed and that I'm still around, so I must, there must be a reason for me to be around. Five times I was almost killed, and that's one of them. The <laughs> fact that I wasn't there the next night, you know. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> In this box, this is your personal uh, things that you shot? I know. I've transferred everything I've ever shot on VHS or Super 8 or whatever to mini DVs. This is Friday the 13th, the making of Friday the 13th Part 4. Here's the Dracula play. Here's my audition for Dust Till Dawn. Oh, wow. Uh, fights, family album, movie I did in Hong Kong, Killing Zoe. Here's Day of the Dead. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the making of Day of the Dead. Eight. There's eight. I'm kind of speechless just looking at this stuff. Like, I want to see everything that's on here. And there's a Monkey third. Shines. Monkey Shines. Necronomicon. Here's my Night of the Living Dead. There's, you can see how many right. are involved. This is Osiris. I played Osiris in um, the Robert Rodriguez movie. Um, machete. Machete, okay. Yeah, a machete kills, right? And machete kills, no, I was, uh, yes, I was Osiris. But in the first one, I was the hired killer. 1-800-HITMAN. Yeah. If you call that, it's a gay porno uh, thing. But I made that film myself and brought it to Robert Rodriguez and he put it in the movie. You know, he, he, on the computer when Jeff Fahey is looking for hired killers, yeah. there I am, you know. But that's, we made that here. Here's Monkey Shines. Here's, uh, making, here's Dust Till Dawn, the making of Dust Till Dawn. Anyway, it's all, well, it's, there's, 
There's two bins. <laughs> Oh There's gosh. more down here. There's more down there. I, it's just, my mind is starting to go a little like crazy just trying to imagine what's on those tapes. Oops. Well, imagine sitting here like I have and log them on paper right. in the computer as to what's on every single one. <clears throat> That's on my list of things to do. The top of the list is to take them from paper and put them on the, yeah. in the files on the computer, you know. Sounds like me. I get a little like. Yeah. No, because oh, really it has to be cataloged. You know? Yeah. Right. Like all the movies you saw upstairs. Yeah. They're all in a book, under. Well, they're alphabetical, so. I do the same thing, and I keep yeah. a copy of it on my phone. Because uh -huh. I have a habit of accidentally buying something. Yeah. Well, that's what I times. don't do. But I have a friend. Yeah. We go to Amoeba in L.A. They're, yeah. Amoeba's great. He whips place. out his phone. Before he buys something, he makes sure he doesn't have it. You know. That's me every time now. Yeah. yeah. It takes a while, but it's so worth it. I love doing stuff like that. Oh, I have I have triples of yeah. things. I just buy them. Because I don't want to look for them. I'd rather just buy it and take it home and watch it, you know, True. instead of... Yeah. You know. <laughs> Originally, when we contacted Tom Savini's school, we thought we were just going to come up here and do a video on possibly one room, like a small museum of the best artwork from the students. But we were mistaken. Instead, we got Tom Savini giving us a tour of the entire program. What do you say to that? And then he tops it off by taking us to his house and showing us his private collection. What do you even say to that? This was an incredible grim location. What do you think? The whole experience made me weak at the knees and he was such a gracious host and so nice. Um, has so many amazing stories and he just, you know, very happy to reminisce and share his work, you know. Um, you ever be like exhausted from happiness? This is exactly that. Wherever I come, I've been luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. His daddy stays. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 